Let's talk about colloids. We'll look at some key properties and common examples. A colloid is a type of mixture that falls somewhere between a homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture. So, first off, a touch of review on types of mixtures. Here's a homogeneous mixture. This is more commonly called a solution. An example is sugar dissolved in water. In a solution, the dissolved particles are very tiny. They might be atoms, ions, or small molecules. And they spread out evenly, giving solutions a uniform appearance. A solution looks like one substance, and it doesn't separate out or settle out over time. On the other hand, in a heterogeneous mixture, the parts don't dissolve. Here is sand and water. You can see the distinct parts here. Now, if you stir things up, the different substances may hang in the water for a moment. They make what's called a suspension. But the parts always settle back out again. And the particles here are relatively big. You can see them. So, a colloid falls somewhere between a solution and a heterogeneous suspension. We'll use an example to make this clearer. We'll look at water in the air. Air is a homogeneous mixture of gases. There's mostly nitrogen and oxygen, but there's pretty much always some water molecules mixed into. Molecules are too tiny to see, but we can zoom in. Here's a water. Because air is a homogeneous mixture, the parts don't settle. These molecules kind of float around, bumping into each other, but they never settle out. Now sometimes, we get so much water in the air that it makes raindrops. And they're so large that they do settle out. The air can't support them, so gravity pulls them down. This is like how other heterogeneous mixtures settle out over time. But there's also an in-between. Sometimes, there's just enough water in the air that tiny droplets form. Although these droplets are bigger than molecules, they're too small to settle. They just kind of float there. But they're big enough to start reflecting light, just like this. So you can see this. When this happens, you get something called fog. And fog is a colloid. It's made of very tiny drops of water dispersed or spread out in the air. So that's what we mean when we say that colloids fall between homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. The particles have a size that is in between or intermediate. Like a homogeneous mixture, fog stays suspended. It doesn't settle out. But like a heterogeneous mixture, the particles are visible. You can see them. So, let's talk about the parts of a colloid. Colloids always have two main parts. We call these parts phases. In fog, the tiny droplets of water are one phase, and the air is another phase. There are technical terms for these two phases. The dispersed substance, and the dispersion medium. In fog, the water droplets are the dispersed substance, and the air is the dispersion medium. The dispersed substance spreads out and kind of floats in the dispersion medium. Now, there are different types of colloids. These depend on what the dispersion medium is and what the dispersed substance is. When you have liquid dispersed in a gas, like fog, you have a type of colloid called an aerosol. You might have heard that word before, maybe with like an aerosol spray can. Same as fog. Liquid is a dispersed substance, and air is the dispersion medium. Another type of colloid is smoke. Like fog, the dispersion medium is air. But with smoke, 
the dispersed substance is a solid. Tiny pieces of burnt wood or rubber or paper. This type of colloid is also called an aerosol. Solid, dispersed, in gas. We can build kind of a table here for the different types of colloids. We've talked about two types of aerosols. Liquid, dispersed in gas, stuff like fog, mist, disinfectant spray, and then solid, dispersed in gas. Examples are smoke as well as dust in the air. We'll look at a few more types of colloids. Here is foam. Foam is a colloid where a gas is dispersed in a liquid medium. Think of whipped cream. If we looked at this foam very closely, we'd see tiny air bubbles dispersed through liquid cream. We'll add foam to our list of colloids, gas and liquid. Shaving cream is another example of a foam. And foam can also be made by dispersing a gas through a solid. That's how marshmallows are made, as well as polystyrene packing peanuts. Another important type of colloid is made by dispersing a solid through a liquid. These might be called gels, and some common examples are glue, paint, and gelatin. Blood is also a colloid of solids dispersed in a liquid. Now, the last type of colloid that we're going to discuss is a little more complex than the others. An emulsion is a liquid substance dispersed in a liquid medium. Normally, these are two liquids that wouldn't dissolve in one another, like oil and vinegar. If you've ever used these in a salad dressing, you know they don't mix together. They are immiscible. One liquid would settle below the other, just like this. But if you add an egg yolk and mix them together using a blender, you get mayonnaise, which is a colloid. We call this type of colloid an emulsion. An emulsion is two immiscible liquids forming a colloid. In an emulsion, the immiscible liquids are often held together by a third substance called an emulsifying agent. That's the egg here. An emulsifying agent is a substance that can sort of interact with both of the liquids. It gets them to come together and it stabilizes them into a colloid. We'll complete our chart by adding emulsions. Liquid dispersed in liquid. Milk is another good example of an emulsion. We can see general categories like aerosols, foams, gels, and emulsions. Notice that every one has the two phases we discussed, the dispersed substance in a dispersion medium. Now, we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of colloids. First off, how they interact with light. If you shine a light through a colloid like fog, you can see the beam. That's because the particles in colloids are big enough to reflect or scatter light. We have a name for this. We call this the Tyndall effect. Think about headlights in the fog or sunbeams in dusty air. Maybe you've been to a concert or a laser light show. Did you notice that they fill the theater with smoke? Well, in order for you to actually see laser beams, they need to reflect off smoke, fog, or dust in the air. The Tyndall effect is one thing that separates colloids from solutions. A solution does not scatter light. The particles are too small. So, when light passes through a solution like air, or salt water, you can't see the beam. But when light shines through a colloid, the particles are large enough to scatter the light. We see the beam. This is the Tyndall effect. Finally, we'll look at filtration. A heterogeneous suspension can be separated by a filter. The particles are large enough 
to stick to the filter paper. Think of sand and water. But the parts of a solution cannot be separated by a filter. The particles are so small, they pass right through the filter. You can't separate salt from salt water by using a filter. When it comes to filtration, colloids are like solutions. The particles are small enough that they can pass through a filter. So, when you have a liquid colloid like milk, you can't separate it out into its parts by passing it through filter paper. Everything is going to pass right through. Okay, so let's do a quick review of everything we've talked about with colloids. There are many different types of colloids, but they all have a dispersed substance in a dispersion medium. We often compare homogeneous solutions, colloids, and heterogeneous suspensions. In a solution, the particles are very small, just atoms. Ions are very small molecules. In a suspension, the particles are large enough to settle, like grains of sand and water. A colloid has intermediate-sized particles, like larger molecules, uh, water droplets, or bits of dust. The Tyndall effect. For solutions, the particles are too small to scatter light. Unless the colloid is opaque, like mayonnaise, a colloid shows the Tyndall effect, and so does a suspension. In a solution, the particles are small enough that they don't separate. This is also true of colloids, but a suspension will settle out over time. And in a solution, the particles are small enough to pass right through a filter. This is also true of colloids, but a suspension can be separated by a filter. So, there you have it. In some ways, colloids seem like a solution. In other ways, they seem like a suspension. But that's part of what makes them so interesting to scientists. Colloids show that nature isn't always easy to classify. So think of that the next time you shine your flashlight through smoke and pretend it's a lightsaber. <laughs>